this is Phil Newman. I'm the editor in chief of Longevity Technology, and I'm joined today by uh, CEO and founder of Kazoo Technology Ventures and the Forever Healthy Foundation, Michael Grief. Hey, Michael. Hi, Phil. Great to have you here. Well, Michael, we're very excited about the announcement today of your 300 million euro fund. I mean, that is a fantastic number, and congratulations. How did you go about raising such a large amount of money? <laughs> Basically, um, it's my own money. So uh, therefore, uh, easy decision. Um, we, you know, we've been for the past more than 10 years, we've been uh, in um, venture capital in the technology area. And we've been, I have to say, extremely successful there. Um, three of the startups that we help create uh, have turned into unicorns by now. Um, so we're using part of the funds that we have just generated from the success that we have in the internet field and using that uh, for the rejuvenation space now. Wonderful. So you are fully committed to rejuvenation, it appears. And obviously your portfolio has been very active. Companies like uh, Underdog, Term Bio, Ajax, uh, there's a roster of all of the rejuvenation therapies in there. Is this again just going to be focused in that space or are you looking wider into the longevity field such as supplements, for example? No, no, not at all. So we have a very, very focused investing strategy um, because um, our uh, main purpose, of course, we want to create successful startups, but right from the beginning, my focus was, uh, my intention was to drive the development of rejuvenation biotech forward. And uh, I think we need to do th two things that we are also doing. First of all, uh, there has to be more basic research or translational research. That, and then in the next step, it has to be translated into startups. And I think the one thing that would really drive the industry and the whole development and basically also the availability um, of rejuvenation therapies for everybody on the planet forward is if we actually deliver proof. So um, uh, I think it's the bad, best advocacy that we can do is um, deliver proof in multiple um, directions. First of all, uh, we want to show rejuvenation is not science fiction, but it's real. Um, we want to show uh, rejuvenation is not for the rich, but it's for everybody. We want to show that rejuvenation is not complicated, but rather uncomplicated in the end, just an injection, IV, or maybe even a pill, uh, probably multiple pills. And of course, we want to show that uh, even so, it's, um, it's uh, 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 just because it's for everybody and it's uncomplicated, it's going to be the best business ever. And um, and I think we can just prove this by delivering successful startups that actually make the point that have therapies. Um, this is the one thing that we have to do, I think, um, that will really, really inspire scientists, uh, other investors and the general public that this is going to be the next big thing and uh, will accelerate the market. Uh, and, and this is why we, from the beginning, focused on that. Very good. So, Michael, in terms of the stage that you would get involved in uh, exciting uh, rejuvenation biotech, would this be everything from a university spin out or are you looking for a, a clinical stage that you're looking to identify as your onboarding for an investment? Do you have a particular stage that you want to get involved in? Yeah, we our, our particular stage is as early as possible. So, um, yeah, university spin out. So we are looking for interested technology and we, we have built uh, quite some expertise also in helping young startups to spin out their IP of the university, um, doing the negotiation with tech transfer offices. So we really see ourselves as mentors and partners of the startups. And virtually for all the startups, we are invested in, in, uh, in 13 now. Um, uh, which most of them, that's him, uh, HX was an existing company, but the rest um, really we were involved right from the beginning, especially in our key startups where, where it was a, uh, usually it's a two to three year process, I have to say, to get from knowing the scientists until you have the funded company with a CEO, with an operational and, and uh, a game plan on how to move forward. And uh, it was the same for Underdog, uh, for Revel, or for Alastair, our latest investment, for example. So in terms then of the stage that you get involved, will you be syndicating these deals or do you look to uh, control valuation at an early stage and follow your money all the way through? Uh, both. So um, 
we, we are taking a strong lead in our startups because we really want to help them all the way through. And uh, with the funds, that's the beauty of it. We are all not limited uh, anymore to just seed financing, but we can um, really maintain a strong lead um, with our startups in a strong position and a strong commitment, I, I have to say, um, through follow on investment rounds. And we are very, very open um, for uh, uh, collaborating with other VCs and uh, for co-investment. Um, I, I even expect and I hope that the money that we provide and the commitment that we provide will enable co-investments up to three to four times the money uh, that we invest. So this will really, I hope this will really move a lot of money into rejuvenation biotech startups in order to move them through the clinic to uh, general availability, the, the therapies. Excellent. So in terms then of the, the, the deal flow that you're looking at and the fact that you'll be syndicating and working with others, and it's a, it's a large amount of money that you're working with, Michael, is there a, uh, is there a deal flow um, number you have in mind on an annualized basis as to how many deals you'd be looking for to support within the fund? Oh, that, that, that's really, really hard to say because our focus is not to make as much deals as possible, but our focus is on what we call um, lighthouse investments in uh, so-called category openers. So category openers, these are um, uh, uh, technological approaches that have never been done before. And we want to do them in, in order to um, show in investors, scientists and the general public that things are, are possible that have not been possible before. Um, it, for example, take underdog. I mean, we are working on a therapy to remove um, soft plaque from the arteries. If we succeed, it has never been done before. Um, uh, it's a, a basically molecular cellular repair approach. And if we would succeed, that would be probably eliminate 75% of all heart attacks and even a higher percentage of stroke, probably not all of them, but uh, we, we're gonna reduce the number of strokes and heart attack globally um, uh, significantly by, by, a, by a magnitude of 10 or something like that. Uh, and and uh, of course that 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 sounds uh, great, you know. And and this is where we're really looking for. So we're not looking for the tenth Synolytics startup that might turn out to be interesting. For example, Synolytics is not really interested for us anymore. We've done two investments in that space, but the space really is going forward. There are numerous companies working. Their money is flowing in. Their organizations taking care of. Synolytics, so it's a widespread concept and we are there to promote, we're making risky, but uh, if possible, high, highly profitable bets. It's, it sounds wonderful, Michael. And in terms of these lighthouse um, areas that you're looking at, you mentioned obviously, you know, plaque being one, I know that you've also been looking at uh, decalcification of tissue. So are there any sort of big uh, identifiers that we could look at for your focus over the next year, for example? Uh, basically everything that goes in that direction of being a groundbreaking um, new thing um, in, in order really to move the market forward. Um, so of course, um, we're, we're operating in, 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 in two dimensions. On, on, on the one hand, we're really, really working very hard to be, the, be bring a therapy to the market. And we also, we feel a, a, a huge responsibility there. I mean, uh, it, we have the opportunity to get uh, rid of heart attacks and strokes. So um, we're really working super hard with, uh, we and our startups are really working super, super hard. And we are really aware of uh, that we have to do everything in our power to make this happen. Uh, because you, uh, from a hum humanitarian standpoint, this is uh, of course unbelievable, if, if, if uh, enormous if we could do this. But on the other hand, also commercially, um, since we, you see, um, what we, what I envision, for example, for the removal of soft plaque is a, a treatment that in average everybody on the planet could afford. And uh, the build up of soft plaque is something that uh, uh, is, is uh, relevant to everybody about above the age of 35, 40. So we're talking half the global population. Um, and this is with the whole rejuvenation biotech is completely different from um, pharma today, where because we're not dealing with a sick population, but we're, de we're dealing with everybody on the planet to keep them healthy. And for example, for um, the removal of the soft plaque, -like preventing of heart attack, imagine you would have a treatment that an average costs you $10 a month, uh, a, a, a small pill every morning. Um, that you swallow that enables the body to remove the soft plaque for $10 a month. I think that's a beautiful thing. 
um, maybe a bit more in Western Europe and maybe even less uh, in, in India or in, in highly uh, not so rich countries where it might be just $1 or $2 um, just on the back of a napkin, but you can make the calculation um, uh, uh, take uh, $10 per month by 4 billion people, that's $40 billion a month, um, times 12, 480 billion. Um, uh, uh, and now take that, I don't know, factor of uh, 10 or 20. So you're talking about a five to $10 trillion company or market, uh, market uh, capitalization potential of that market. And that's only heart attack, you know? So it's, 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 it's enormous and it's very positive that it is that way because this will gonna attract a lot of capital and that in order will enable more research and more startups, so accelerating the market. Absolutely, well, Michael, as, as we're all seeing now, there's a lot of new and exciting companies coming into the field. I think that obviously people are starting to understand what longevity is all about and really how that's going to work. So you're working with, in terms of your, your focus, you mentioned earlier, uh, early stage university spin outs. What's the best way for an entrepreneur to approach your fund? Uh, just send us an email um, to either at, uh, uh, ventures at kizu.com or at hello foreverhealthy.org. So we're super open. Um, you find the links on our website. Uh, we look at all the proposals. We, we, um, uh, we really do uh, uh, enjoy getting proposals from teams that, even if they're just uh, doing research right now, and um, we're talking to a lot of people during their research phase um, where this spin out might just happen in a year and two years from now. Um, we are really in for the long term. And um, uh, as I said, we really want to focus on these lighthouse investments and bring the therapies to the market. Uh, and, and we see ourselves uh, as a founding member of the company. Yes, we are a VC, but we work so closely. We have done the same in technology and that worked pretty well. And we're doing the same in rejuvenation biotech especially with our key startups um, like Underdog, Revel, Elastrin, or Selvi, we are really close contact and we're really, really working together with them to make things happen. Wonderful. Well, uh, Michael, congratulations again on, on the fund. Uh, thank you on behalf of the community for such a generous contribution to the future of the sector. It's, it's fascinating and going to be very exciting to see. So thanks very much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for the conversation.